that, that's, that's, that was how I interpreted okay. uh, your question, that, that thinking more about the talent in your supply chain. And, and I think that gets to the globalization, localization, the, the Margie's uh, questions as issues as well, is that uh, do you want to chase the cheapest labor you can find, in which case you're not investing in talent, you're investing in, in the cheap, cheap labor, or do you want to build capability and capacity in, in your people, and that means you have to stay still. It means you can't chase the cheapest labor in, in the world. It means you've, you, you've, you stay put, and you, you, you win through productivity improvement, not through low labor costs. And I think that's the story that, that you're basically telling it. And I think you look at a company like Toyota, obviously they, they've gone in the direction of we're gonna build capability. You look at a company like Lee and Fong, and they're, they're, they've got a challenge, right? Because historically they've, They've had to compete on cost and be where the low labor costs are. Increasingly, uh, I, I think they're beginning to to feel the great tensions of of having trying to chase that. Do we do we move on from China to Bangladesh to Vietnam to to Burma, or do we stay put and, and follow more of this strategy? And if you do, that means you have to begin investing in your in your people in a very different way, build loyalty, build capability, win through productivity. But you still have to compete against the other guys who are going to chase the cheap labor. Not an easy game. You're allowed. Am I allowed? Sure, you're allowed. Albert, Albert produced all of these posters. Albert has been doing a lot of the background work on the supply chain in FGI. So you're, you're, you're allowed. Thanks. So all the mistakes are mine as well. Um, sorry, uh, my name's Albert. I'm, I'm actually from FGI, as Don I just mentioned. And uh, I mean, I figured in terms of the, the perspective for this panel, Carlos, you had mentioned that um, we're looking at a lot of risks, and as you had mentioned, that they're also fundamentally considered opportunities. So if, uh, if we're taking a look at it from the firm perspective, and we're trying to evaluate where the risks and the opportunities are, and uh, if we combine those two, let's just call them change, uh, I'd be very interested in seeing from each of your relative perspectives whether you anticipate or whether you see um, any significant changes that will affect uh, the world of supply chains uh, in the near future, and if there's anything in particular that you have uh, a passion or a serious interest or curiosity in, um, and something that maybe would pertain to uh, the supply chain practitioners uh, and just keeping an eye on. Yeah, so up, you. up to your top three, not your top ten, but your top three. <laughs> that's, that's a good idea. <laughs> Um, well, um, let, me, let me refer to a conversation that uh, a couple of weeks ago we had Charlie and, and myself in my office. Um, some of these companies that work in this forum, they raised one question that it's uh, very difficult for me to answer. I asked Charlie because I thought that he, he would be able to answer. He thought, hmm, I didn't thought too much about that either, <laughs> which is uh, the relation between risk and speed. If you think about that, uh, and uh, I use the example of, of fashion because it's an interesting one. You could conceptualize the idea of fast fashion as saying, by being much faster, we reduce the risk of the typical business risk because we don't need to forecast so much. Typical answer is, and that was also how Lee who developed that idea of, you know, if you can be much faster, that means you don't need effectively to pro forecast and to, and to see what is coming. Now, the same is about risks. Can we react much faster? Is this valuable or not? And then in some cases, you find some companies saying, I remember working with Shell. Shell was saying, yeah, absolutely. For us, our calculation of net present value is an easy one. Some people were saying, well, in the pharma industry, we might need to use the option theory and Monte Carlo simulation to put that value. But there's a general question. Do we see value on that? Because in some cases, speed is more expensive. Is that an insurance policy against risk? So that's one of the, one of the first topics I see. The second, which is going to be interesting to see what's going to happen is, and it's dealt in another forum, is I see the biggest lever, and it was mentioned yesterday also, about sustainability in supply chains. And let me explain to you why. I was invited by a company called Unilever to their supplier's day. That was in Trottenheim Stadium last year in, in the UK. Now, they had hundreds of suppliers over there, and they told them, we want you to reduce that much CO2 by that date and by this time. Now, in one go, you get hundreds of suppliers not thinking if they want to do it, but saying our customer is asking to do it, so we have no choice. If not, they won't work with us. So I think that there is going to be a very interesting thing about these people in supply chain having the biggest leverage there, and they could do that. And um, 
the third thing I think I will, I will pass on the third. I think that these two are the most important ones. So I guess my forecast for supply chain managers is it's going to get harder. <laughs> <laughs> that, that I think, uh, so, so I, I, building on the speed thought, uh, is, is the speed of change going to get any slower? Well, what drives speed of change? Well, I think one of the things is technological innovation. That is, most of your supply chains run 24-7 and your Blackberries and iPhones never stop updating you because of technological innovation. We live, the global supply, supply chains are more global because of technological innovation. Technological innovation drives speed of change and, and integration and it's going to get it's not slowing down the technological innovation, apropos the comments earlier about, about 3D printing and, and those kinds of things. Another thing that drives uh, speed of change is competition. And competition is driven partly by globalization. If you have globalization, then you're, any firm in the world is competing with many, many other firms around the world. It's, you're not just competing with your few local competitors, you're competing with, your, with, with a large number of global suppliers. Globalization is, continues to increase because of airplanes, because of internet. Uh, it, it seems to be a pretty irreversible process. So, so globalization is going to make thing, create more competition. That's going to speed things up. Technological innovation is going to speed things up. Uh, where life is not going to get simpler for supply chain managers. Okay. Can you cheer us up a bit, Hal? <laughs> Uh, I, I just want to uh, mention that um, um, there is something called the triple A supply chain concepts, right? Triple A uh, stands for the first A being agility, the second A being adaptability, and the third A is alignment. And I think, uh, Albert, uh, when, when we are faced with uh, risks, um, the three A concepts seems to be quite applicable to me. And the first one is being uh, agility. And Carlos has mentioned that maybe sometimes speed, agility, flexibility is one way for us to both reduce risk as well as being able to respond uh, to some of the unexpected disruptions uh, faster. So it really elevates the, the importance of agility and, uh, and perhaps even the, the, the clock speed of uh, agility using the, the term that uh, Charlie has uh, used in his book. Uh, the second adaptability is as there are more risks and there are more changes, it means that we just have to be even more alert about how to adapt, adapt your supply chain. And Carlos mentioned about the success of a uh, company, Inditex. And Inditex used to manufacture 90% uh, in, in Spain and Portugal. But over the years, they also recognized the need to adapt their supply chain. And I, the latest I learned is that now 60% of the manufacturing is based in China. So they also adapt, even though their kind of core strategy is local manufacturing. And so adaptation is necessary. And how do you adapt well? Uh, and what do you adapt to uh, became a much bigger problem. And the third A alignment is when we have risks, no single company uh, can perhaps shoulder all the risks. So we may have to design new supply contracts and incentive systems so that uh, the right risk sharing schemes uh, and the right uh, reward sharing too. Of course, uh, risk sharing has to be commensurate with uh, reward sharing, cost sharing schemes are necessary to align the incentives of the multiple supply chain partners uh, in order for us to really have a synchronized uh, supply chain. So it seems to me that the triple A concepts uh, is really uh, at the core of risk management and be responsive uh, to risk in the supply chain. Good. Thank you. Margie. That's scary. That's such a men's view. Um, I, you know, triple A, able, amiable, and available. Um, and I, th I think that I'm going to close by uh, taking this uh, from a woman's perspective on the global supply chain and say that um, it's very scary because I think very often the global supply chain looks at the supply chain um, from a um, buyer's market mm -hmm. perspective. And it's sort of like love me and leave me. It's very scary. So I think we've got to, we have a responsibility to the communities um, where the workers are doing all the work and supplying to consumers everywhere. I think it is critical that as managers, we have the foresight of anticipating these disruptions that will definitely come. Uh, whether it is because of good news, 
economic uh, growth, therefore a higher standard of living. Uh, Penang, as you know, were, were struggling with. Um, how do we anticipate all sudden disruptions from technology? It's all going to come. So our responsibility is to um, have the supply chain of talent raise the uh, overall ability of the uh, people who are contributing to the supply chain so that they can fit in to the changes. And I think that's the challenge and responsibility for all of us in the global supply chain. Uh, excellent ending point, and I'd just like to stress that I, within the supply chain studies in FGI, clearly we're interested in risk from the viewpoint of buyers, but very much risk from the viewpoint of the people doing the work and risk from the entrepreneurs who are making the investments in the pieces of the chain. And to broaden it out from just will you get the stuff out at the right price, what happens to the people who have committed themselves to work in a particular place, committed themselves to learn some skills, committed themselves to build a factory. Commi so it's commitment against this uncertainty and how does one align the incentives and get some equity in this total commitment. So I hope we'll elevate it one level from just how do you manage the supply chain to how do you think about the supply chain as a central integrating device in how we all live. So with that, I'd like to thank our panelists. I'd very much like to thank the excellent questioners, and I think we're on time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.